Hello there guys, so today I'm here to do an update for you. It has been three weeks since I posted a video. If you guys follow our vlog channel, which if you don't, I will have that link down below. Um, I got really sick, so from the title of the video, you guys are gonna be like, Ariana, are you just making excuses for why you stopped working out? No, like, this whole situation has been kind of crazy. So to start off with, about two days after I started working out, I started getting really weird symptoms. My whole entire body got really heavy at night and just painful all around, my legs got um, like my muscles just started to really hurt. Um, I my heart rate went up between like 110 and 130 all day. It would be there whether I was sitting, standing, laying. It didn't matter what I was doing. It was always between like 110 and 130. I started getting fevers only at like night between like 9 p.m. and 1 a.m. And then I also started getting headaches too. So at first I just kind of pushed it off um, because like having Ehlers Danlos, there's a lot of weird things that happen and sometimes it just could be that or it could be something else. And so it took me a while to realize this is something, there's something else going on. Um, and so I had made appointment with my doctor about my high heart rate. And when I went in, it was 122, I think. So he sent me home though and had me make an appointment with a cardiologist. And two weeks ago today, I called the cardiologist um, and they sent me over to the triage nurse in the hospital and she wanted me to tell her like what had been going on. Um, I guess like when you call a cardiologist, they always do that just to make sure that it's nothing that needs to be taken care of right away. And she said, if your heart rate has been, you know, at 110, 120 for two weeks, one, two weeks, you really should go to the hospital tonight if it's still like that. So I was like, okay, and getting off the phone thinking, all right, then I'm gonna be going to the hospital because it's been like this for a week and a half, two weeks. So that night, two weeks ago today, I went to the hospital to the ER to get checked out. And um, he, the doctor that I saw was a complete, not like I wanna call him a bad word. At first when he came in, he was really full of himself, really stuck up. Um, I specifically asked for them to give me a doctor that knew about Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. He was the one that happened to be working that knew about it. He was just like very questionable about why I was there. He was like, if that if that nurse had not tell you to come in, would you have come in? And I'm just like, dude, like there's something wrong. Like something's going on. He runs all these tests. Like he ran tons of tests. I was surprised he ran that many because he didn't seem to like believe that there was something wrong. And he came back um, looking a little bit defeated <laughs> when he came back and was like, well, we didn't expect for your liver enzymes to be so high and my spleen was enlarged in the ultrasound that they had taken. So he's like, so something is going on. He's like, do I think you'd die if I sent you home? No, but I don't feel comfortable sending you home not knowing what's going on. So I was like, okay, so he wanted to admit me. So he admitted me that Wednesday night and I ended up staying the Wednesday night, Thursday, and then I finally got to home Friday. It was a very, very long, um, stay. I mean, it didn't, it was only three days, but there was just some stuff that happened that made the stay longer than it needed to be um, because there was like a lapse of information between the nurses and the doctors for me not eating. And so I had eaten and then I had to wait another eight hours <laughs> um, to take a test because I couldn't eat for it. So it was just, it was a bit stressful. Um, but I finally got test results back saying that I had the virus CMV. So some of you guys may have heard of it, some of you may have not. It's classified as a herpes virus, which is like chickenpox or mono. Those are herpes viruses as well. This virus though is actually way more common than I realized when I started researching it and they gave me like paperwork on it and stuff. Um, one in three kids are infected with it by age five and by 40 or 50 years old, I think it was like 80% of Americans have this virus. So this is a virus that once you get it, it stays in your system forever, um, but it will be inactive and then it can reactivate. So like chicken pox though, um, it's very uncommon that it would activate more than once. And, but for some people, I'm sure some of you guys have heard, like most people will say like, you can only get chicken pox once, but that's actually not true. There are some people that have gotten it more than once. So it does happen. It's just very rare. Um, it's, it's not a common thing. So I don't know if I have had mine activate before in the past. So where things get kind of strange with my CMV is um, for most people that have a normal immune system, they don't even know that they have the virus. It might just kind of come across as like a common cold or not anything just because the their immune system is strong enough to just fight it off. So those with compromised immune systems or weakened immune systems though, they can have a lot of big issues like with their spleen enlargement, liver enzymes going up, um, and having a lot of the 
problems that I had with it. So then I started like trying to figure out like why, like I don't have a weakened immune system. Ehlers-Danlos is not an autoimmune disease, so it wouldn't be that. Now, it is common though that those with EDS do have autoimmune diseases and I could have one and not know about it, but I feel like I have a fairly good immune system. I get colds here and there, um, like our kids have been passing around colds <laughs> between the cousins and them just for what feels like months. But <clears throat> like for instance, when I was pregnant with Ari, Ryan got the flu, I was still kissing him and I never got it. Like I have a fairly good immune system. So basically what me and my doctor think possibly happened um, is that when I started working out, my body had to put so much attention on repairing my muscles because obviously when you work out, those <clears throat> muscles start to tear just a little bit and that's how they, um, and then they repair back stronger. And so that's how it works. Now with Ehlers-Danlos, obviously um, I have a lot of ligament joint issues going on. So my body probably had to put a lot more attention towards um, repairing my body than someone without EDS would have. So either I was already active with the virus and then working out caused my immune system to weaken so then it started to like attack my body more or that weakened it and somehow then it activated. I would guess more likely that it was already active and I didn't know it, that my immune system weakened and it attacked my body more. So that's the kind of the thought process of maybe what happened. But there's no like certain answer as to why <laughs> really. But so yeah, the thought right now is working out probably made me sick. So right now I cannot work out. Um, I still am like super pumped and very motivated. I definitely feel like still this time around, it was a light switch and not just like a little push forward, like like a little mini motivation that I was like, you know what, I'm gonna work out. It was a light switch because it's still there and I still wanna work out every day, but I can't. Um, <laughs> yesterday, in the past couple days, I've been feeling a lot better. Um, I actually had a doctor's appointment last week to get my liver enzymes rechecked and they came back still high. They were too high, much too high, um, but they had gone down still from being in the hospital. So that's great news. There were a few other things that had changed, um, like my uh, white blood cell count had gone up just a little bit, I think it was. Um, my alkaline phosphatase levels had gone up, but it was nothing my doctor was concerned about. He said, like, that's still normal with CMV. As of right now, like, we're not concerned about anything that's gone up because it didn't go up, like, drastically or anything. So, my um, spleen, I'm going to get rechecked in probably a month or two to make sure that that has gone down. The reason they think like my spleen enlarged is because the CMV virus can affect your, um, what are those things called? Lymph nodes. It can affect your lymph nodes. And your spleen, as the doctor in the hospital explained it, is basically like a huge lymph node. And so that's probably why that was enlarged. Um, but they wanna make sure that it goes down. So it will get that rechecked, but it'll be about a month or two unless at my next appointment, which was next week, when they draw my blood, if my liver enzymes went up again or something, then I'd get one sooner. But basically my doctor is just keeping an eye on me right now. The best part about um, this whole experience though, by far has been um, what my doctor has been able to learn about me. So with EDS, you know, I've lived my entire life, um, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, I've lived my entire life pretty much um, like my life that I can remember as a young adult and everything. Um, in pain in some kind of some kind of pain and I've just learned that like when I go out of the house I just it's just like this switch like right now I'm having a ton of back pain as I sit here like my back is killing me But I just like I don't know I just kind of train my, my mind to just ignore it or try if I focus on it Then I'm like, okay, really need to hunch down right now <laughs> but I've just kind of mm, I figured out how to compartmentalize when I leave the house and just be fine and sometimes I forget to like not necessarily look how I feel when I go to the doctor, but for for his regular patients, you know, when they start to feel like I do, it's not normal for them and so they look sick. And so he said out of this, we were, we were just talking and in passing, he mentioned, I had not coaxed this conversation at all. He was like, there is one thing though that I have learned out of this conversation. He said, if you had come in, because now remember I went um, to see him the day that I got admitted to the hospital and he did not send me into the hospital or anything. He said, if you had come in looking how you said you felt, I would have called an ambulance and sent you to the hospital right away. He said, so I learned that you don't show how you feel. And because of that, when you say you feel a certain way, this him, like his quote, 
I'm going to be a lot more aggressive with you in future um, with figuring out what's going on even if you don't physically look like you say you feel because you probably do actually feel that way and now he realizes that and to hear a doctor acknowledge that is a big deal um, and it's it's reassuring um, because like I said I've just I've really learned how to just ignore it as long as I can <laughs> and so um, yeah that was just something good that came out of this for sure um, oh so yeah I wanted to start working out next week again and I had been starting to feel pretty good the last couple days I've been able to help again with the girls at night um, which has been a lot less stressful on our marriage on our family in general Ryan has been awesome taking care of the kids without complaint um, but it's still stressful for him because he gets home from work and his wife is just like I'm done I'm gonna go you know lay down basically he gets like the remnants of me every day while I've been sick because I just haven't been able to do a lot so things have just been awesome overall um, not like things were terrible or anything like that but it's been much better now that I've been feeling better um, and so I started to think like okay next week I can start working out again I should be good like that'll be awesome I took the girls to the library yesterday and all night and today my legs are killing me and so <laughs> I'm sitting there talking to Ryan and we're laying in bed last night and I'm like I was gonna go I was gonna work out like next week I can't even handle taking my kids to the library let alone trying to work out again so one thing that's been discouraging through all this is um, feeling like my body is not up to letting me get in shape like w this constant like wonder of am I ever gonna be able to get in shape or is my body gonna just get sick every time <laughs> I try now I know that this was probably just like a kind of a fluke thing and I know that I'll be okay um, and a lot of you guys made suggestions on our vlog channel to start small and so I'm basically gonna start by working out um, in like a walking aspect first I think I, I mentioned it on the vlog that um, my body like I feel like I can do a lot more than my body is probably ready for so I was a very sports sporty kid um, I naturally am like a mesomorph type body so I naturally have a lot of muscle um, and I worked out a lot as a kid I was in gymnastics as a kid it's basically though that my body feels like it can do more than it can repair if that makes sense I don't know <laughs> um, so I'm gonna start small with walking doing less not going straight into like full-on Pilates <laughs> and getting my body like worked up to that and ready for Pilates so that's kind of where I'm at right now and I hope next week that I can um, I think I'm gonna wait for my appointment next week to find out my results to make sure my enzymes are still going down um, because I would just I would love to be able to get back into things this weekend though my parents are awesome and are taking the girls overnight from Saturday to Sunday like pretty much all day Saturday and part of Sunday and Ryan and I are planning to film a bunch of videos for my minimalism series he's gonna help me knock out a bunch of them um, so I'm hoping that that will help too with keeping up with this channel um, in case it takes a little bit longer the virus for average it's like 18 days for people um, I'm already way past that but my doctor said it could be up to 52 days um, so I'm about at the month mark I think but thank you guys for all of your prayers your well wishes everything um, they have meant so much to me really I'm sorry if I haven't been able to like answer back to all your messages and comments and stuff but I have read them um, I'm still going through messages though but I just want to say thank you guys give you guys an update since I haven't been on this channel in a while and I know not everyone watches our vlog channel so that's what's been going on I'm definitely gonna start back up with the workout series and the minute let's let's get minimal series I also want to do like some other videos I just don't know what I'm excited for spring and summer like is there anything you guys want to see do you want to see like a like routine videos or are there any kind of recipe videos you want to see do you want to see lookbooks for toddlers and infants do you what do you want to see I don't know anything like let me know down in the comments below what kind of videos you want to see this spring and summer on this channel so I'm gonna leave you guys I'm already at like 16 minutes recorded hopefully you guys have stuck around if you have if you have is that, is that correct grammar if you have stuck around the entire time write something regarding the color purple in the comments um, to let me know that you have watched this entire video <laughs> so I will see you guys hopefully yes I will because I'm recording this weekend stuff so I'll have something at it I will see you guys next week Bye.